having a strong mechanized force is critical for victory in a battle. These forces consist of the armored corps and the mechanized infantry. They are supported by self-propelled artillery, air defense guns, helicopters and other mobile elements. I can destroy anything which comes in between. These mechanized vehicles are a very potent force in war. The ultimate aim of any soldier is to go to war one day. And for that you have to be continuously prepared. I guess you'll have to be at the target end to realize the effect of tank fire bar. The only option left with the enemy is to pray, pray and pray more. There is nothing which can really stop this monster. One important part of the mechanized forces is the armored core. The main role of armored core is to deliver firepower with speed at the desired place. Armored Corps is a division of an army that fights a battle using armored vehicles. These vehicles are no ordinary vehicles. They have armor made from thick and heavy metal plates. It's a huge amount of metal in front of you. That is protecting the crew from uh, tank fire. So that is why it needs to be protected. The arsenal of the Indian mechanized forces includes main battle tanks at par with the most modern tanks in the world and infantry combat vehicles complemented by specialists in mechanized warfare. Armored Corps has got an extremely crucial role to play. In fact, uh, Armored Corps is the spearhead of any kind of operation that this country is going to undertake. During a war, the armored forces play a crucial role in running over enemy positions and establishing dominance over a large area at one go. The armored forces of today are the modern avatars of the erstwhile cavalry. Cavalry soldiers used to pierce through enemy infantry formations riding horses, camels and chariots. They have now been replaced by vehicles like tanks. The war horses of the armored forces. They can operate in terrains where other combat arms have difficulty moving. While the artillery attack is used, the armor being mobile, it can move ahead. It can fire while on the move. 45 ton giant machine can move at 70 kilometers an hour. That's mobility for you. Tanks have turrets, radar and secondary armaments that can swivel 360 degrees. The entire tank body can spin 360 degrees standing at one place. Tanks thus offer unparalleled maneuverability in ground battles. We have this kind of mobility to survive and deliver the decisive punch. The Indian Army has various types of tanks catering to a variety of battle requirements. These include the indigenously developed battle tank Arjun. It is equipped with a 120mm rifled gun, which can fire a wide range of shells. Its indigenously developed Kanchan composite armor offers its crew superior protection against enemy attack. So for the first time when I saw the tank, I was flabbergasted. It was so huge, big. It was looking like a war machine. The Indian Armoured Arsenal also consists of tanks of Russian origin. T-72, named Ajay by the Indian Army, is one of the most potent and versatile tanks the Armoured Corps possesses. A crew of one commander, one gunner and one driver operates this lethal piece of machinery. Its primary weapon is the 125mm smoothbore gun, capable of firing high explosive anti-tank ammunition. It can destroy targets up to 4 kilometers in aimed fire.
The main battle tank of the Indian Army is the T-90, also of Russian origin. It is named Bhishma by the Indian Army. It compares with the finest main battle tanks in the world. It has a 125 mm smooth bore gun. It has everything that any tank would require right now in the modern day warfare. This is a, one of the smallest tanks that is there of its class. Supposing this the, with the color that is there on this tank. If you place it somewhere at 2000 meters, about 2 kilometers somewhere in the bushes, you won't be able to see it. But it is having a huge amount of firepower. We don't require roads to move on. We make our own way in deserts. And this is how the Amut Corps goes. We rule the deserts. We've got a very special relationship with the uh, deserts. The heat and the dust of the Thar Desert means that both the tanks and their crew work under extreme weather conditions. Summer daytime temperatures here can soar up to 50 degrees Celsius. Metal being a good conductor of heat means that the tank crew stationed inside these all-metal vehicles, closed from all four sides, may have to endure temperatures as high as 60 degrees Celsius. The tank crew stations are not air-conditioned. With the deserts, we share a relationship as we share with our wives. Initially, it takes time to understand her, but once you, you know, start loving it, once you start staying there, you enjoy it. Armoured forces are considered to be best equipped and most effective for battles in plains and deserts. However, the Indian Army created a record of sorts by deploying tanks at Zozilla, nearly 12,000 feet above the sea level, during the Kashmir War in 1947-48. The unanticipated appearance of tanks at these heights took the enemy by complete surprise and dampened their morale. The Indian Armoured Forces have always been there when called upon to defend the country. They have played a critical role in all the four wars the country has fought in. Yeah, I feel it is more about the men than the machines. The men are the real power, the energy that drives this army. The machines keep changing, but the men have always remained the same, pre-independence and post. The Armored Corps was my final choice and will always be my final choice whenever I join, in my next birth also. The men of the Armored Corps are known to live by the traditional cavalry spirit. We are cavaliers, we are happy-go-lucky, we work hard, we party hard. Armored Corps has got a slightly different kind of an attitude, a swagger to our gate. Uh, that again too is born out of our dedication towards our job. It is not that we do different things, it is that we do our things differently. These men have a mix of dash, elan and a willingness to engage the enemy at once. I hope we are able to live up to the expectations of this great nation which has reposed such explicit faith in us. Guarding uh, the frontier of the nation, I always feel, you know, proud and uh, just want to be there till I live. Be it even if it means to the peril of his life, if he has to die, if your task is allotted that, okay, he knows I'm going to die, but he still goes ahead and still fights. That is what makes an army man. I assure you, the country is in safe hands.